UNM scientists' magma accumulation beneath the Yellowstone caldera. Scientists have long been fascinated by Yellowstone National Park and the scientific playground it has provided for the research community for decades. Seismic tomography has played a critical role in the research, providing scientists with insight into Yellowstone's crustal magmatic system to understand subsurface melt distribution and the current stage of the volcano's life cycle. With the help of new tomographic images of the shear wave velocity of the Yellowstone magmatic system, scientists are gaining new insight into what is happening beneath the Yellowstone caldera, sometimes referred to as the Yellowstone supervolcano. This caldera was formed more than 2.1 million years ago after a series of three super eruptions, the most recent of which occurred 640,000 years ago creating the Yellowstone caldera. The eruption of rhyolitic material covered much of the western United States and the Great Plains with ash. The collapse of the magma reservoir formed the present-day Yellowstone caldera in northwestern Wyoming. Since then, the region has been filled with rhyolite flows that are 70,000 years old. Based on geophysical observations, it is quite clear that the modern Yellowstone magmatic system is still active, but questions remain regarding the volume and distribution of melt and how it compares with conditions before previous eruptions. The long-term curiosity is what's behind Yellowstone today, said Brandon Schmant a professor in the Department of Earth and Planetary Sciences at the University of New Mexico. You can walk on the surface and see vast expanses of lava eruptions and hydrothermal activity. But it's hard to know how much melt there is several kilometers deep in the Earth's crust today. Scientists are observing the emergence of continental magma reservoirs involving crystal mush zones, liquid matter that is partly dominated by crystals that can persist in the Earth's crust over long time scales, 100,000 years or more, but such melt-rich zones are likely to erupt. Relatively short-lived, perhaps thousands of years or less. From this perspective, a layer of eruptible silica melt can quickly accumulate near the top of the crystal mush zone before an eruption occurs. As a result, the ability to image the subsurface to determine whether or not there is a melt-rich zone near the top of the magma reservoir can be an important indicator of where Yellowstone is currently in its eruptive life cycle. Working with mentors including Schmant, and Min Chen in the Department of Earth and Environmental Sciences at Michigan State University, former UNM postdoctoral scholar Ross McGuire, who was awarded a National Science Foundation NSF, postdoctoral fellowship for this research, examined magmatic systems in Yellowstone. He used a modern seismic wave imaging technique called full wave inversion of ambient noise correlation that revealed a more than 30% reduction in shear wave velocities associated with Yellowstone's silicate magma reservoir. McGuire, now an assistant professor at the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign, integrated data from several different time periods and applied more sophisticated methods to squeeze additional information from existing data and gain a new view of the magma reservoir beneath the Yellowstone caldera. <laughs>